He is known for being a French physician and traveler. He is recognized for his groundbreaking publication on the classification of humans into distinct races. His name is François Bernier. François Bernier, a French physician and traveler, embarked on a remarkable journey that would not only shape his own understanding of the world but also contribute to the classification of humans into distinct races. Born in Joidia in Anjou, Bernier's thirst for knowledge led him to spend around 12 years in India. During his time in India, Bernier immersed himself in the rich culture and diverse society of the Mughal Empire. His keen observations and extensive travels formed the basis of his renowned publication, Travels in the Mughal Empire. In this remarkable work, Bernier delved into the reigns of Dara Shirko and Aurangzeb, providing a captivating account of their rule. However, it was another of Bernier's publications that would leave a lasting impact on the study of human classification. In 1684, he published Nouvelle Division de la Terre par les Differences Species OU Races que El Habitant, considered to be the first post classical classification of humans into distinct races. This groundbreaking work paved the way for further research and understanding of human diversity. Despite his significant contributions, Bernier's intellectual pursuits extended beyond his travels and classification of races. He also translated the philosophical writings of his close friend Pierre Gassendi from Latin to French. In his publication, Abrege de la Philosophie de Gassendi, Bernier faithfully conveyed Gassendi's ideas without any personal interjection or invention. However, Bernier's own doubts and reservations regarding some of Gassendi's notions led him to publish Dutz de Mr. Bernier sur quelques uns de principaux chapters de son abrège de la philosophie de Gassendi, in 1682. François Bernier's journey through India and his contributions to the understanding of human classification and philosophy attest to his insatiable curiosity and intellectual prowess. His works continue to be studied and celebrated, highlighting the profound impact he had on the fields of anthropology and philosophy. François Bernier, a son of a farmer, had an extraordinary life that took him on a journey across continents and into the realms of philosophy and medicine. Orphaned at a young age, Bernier found solace under the care of his uncle, the Cure de Chanzos. It was during his studies at the Collège de Clermont in Paris that he developed a taste for travel, thanks to his friendship with Chapelle, the natural son of Lollier, a counselor in Metz. But it was his encounter with the philosopher Pierre Gassendi that would shape Bernier's path. He became Gassendi's aide and secretary, delving into the world of philosophy and expanding his understanding of the world. In 1652, while staying with Gassendi in the south of France, Bernier obtained a medical degree from the Faculté de Montpellier through an intensive three-month course. With his newfound medical credentials, Bernier embarked on a 12-year journey to the east. He traveled through Palestine, Egypt, and Arabia, attempting to enter Ethiopia but thwarted by civil war. Finally, in 1658, he arrived in India, where he served as a personal doctor to Dara Shirko, a prince whose tragic downfall he would later document. During his time in India, Bernier's medical expertise granted him access to the highest ranks of the Mughal court, even to the emperor's harem on medically required occasions. He became the first European to describe Kashmir, a land of great intrigue and beauty. Bernier's travels continued as he met other notable travelers like Jean-Baptiste Tavernier and Jean Chardin, expanding his knowledge and experiences. Upon his return to France, Bernier found himself embroiled in controversy. He defended the ideas of René Descartes and wrote an Abrège de la philosophie de Gassendi, which did not sit well with the authorities. However, he was welcomed into the literary salons of the time, becoming a favored guest and mingling with influential figures like Marguerite de la Sablière and Ninon de Lanclos. In 1685, Bernier visited London, where he met famous exiles from France and returned to Paris via the Netherlands. His life came to an end in 1688, the same year his work, Lettre sur le quietisme de Inns, was published. Throughout his life, Bernier maintained correspondence with notable philosophers and intellectuals, such as Jean Chapeline and Melchizedek Thevenot. François Bernier's journey from a humble farmer's son to a traveler, philosopher, and medical doctor is a testament to the power of curiosity and the pursuit of knowledge. His experiences in different cultures and his interactions with great minds of his time shaped his philosophy and understanding of the world. Bernier's life teaches us the importance of embracing new experiences, engaging with different perspectives, and seeking knowledge beyond our own boundaries. François Bernier, a French philosopher and traveler, found himself captivated by the diversity of the human race. In 1684, he published an essay in the journal De Scavens, titled, New Division of the Earth by the Different Species or Races of Man that Inhabit It. In this essay, Bernier attempted to classify humanity into distinct races based on physical traits and his personal experiences as a traveler. Bernier's classification consisted of four races. The first race included populations from Europe, North Africa, 
the Middle East, India, Southeast Asia, and the Americas. The second race consisted of Sub-Saharan Africans, while the third race comprised East and Northeast Asians. However, it is the fourth race that caught people's attention, the Sami people, also known as the Lapons. In his essay, Bernier described the Sami people as a small and short race, with thick legs, wide shoulders, and a face that he found difficult to describe, except to say that it was long, truly awful, and seemed reminiscent of a bear's face. He admitted to only having seen them twice in Danzig, but based on portraits and accounts from others, he labeled them as ugly animals. While Bernier's classification may seem offensive and derogatory by today's standards, it is important to understand the context in which it was written. Bernier's essay was a product of French salon culture, where discussions on beauty and physical appearance were prevalent. He believed that his classification was based on his personal experiences and observations as a traveler. Although Bernier classified races based on physical traits, he also acknowledged the role of climate and diet in explaining degrees of human diversity. He did not establish a cultural hierarchy between the races he identified, but he did place white Europeans as the norm from which other races deviated. He attributed different qualities to each race, explaining the differences between civilizations through climate and institutional history. Today, Bernier's essay serves as a reminder of the flawed understanding of race during that period. It highlights the importance of critically examining historical narratives and recognizing the harm that can be caused by essentializing and stereotyping different racial groups. By understanding the historical context of such classifications, we can strive for a more inclusive and empathetic society. François Bernier, a prominent figure in the 17th century, made significant contributions to the development of scientific racism through his system of racial classification. By being the first to propose a comprehensive system that extended to all of humanity, Bernier's classifications paved the way for the genesis of scientific racism. His classifications were rooted in physical and biological differences in human appearance, which aimed to provide a scientific basis for understanding racial variation. During his time spent in the Mughal courts, Bernier encountered Indians and classified them as part of the white race. He attributed their skin color, similar to that of Egyptians, to be accidental, resulting from their exposure to the sun. However, when it came to categorizing Africans, Bernier noted that blackness is an essential feature of theirs. He argued that their skin color was not merely a result of environmental factors, as even when living in colder climates, Africans would still possess their distinct blackness. Although Bernier's understanding of biological and racial differences due to climatic features was somewhat blurry, it contributed to the eventual development of theories of scientific racism. However, when he first published his work, it did not cause a significant stir. The scientific discourse of the time had shifted toward systems supported by fixed laws of nature, rather than analogies like Bernier employed. Consequently, Bernier's classification received relatively little attention in the second half of the 17th century, and he remained a man of the salons. Understanding Bernier's philosophy and contributions to scientific racism can help us navigate daily life by highlighting the dangers of categorizing and stereotyping individuals based on their physical appearances. It reminds us to question the validity and ethical implications of using race as a determinant of human worth or abilities. By recognizing the historical roots of scientific racism, we can strive for a more inclusive and equitable society that values the inherent dignity and equality of all individuals, regardless of their racial background. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.